Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you all to our Wednesday morning class. Thank you for joining us. You that are here in person and you that are joining us online today, we want to welcome you to our class. Um, we're in a mini series on the subject of reincarnation. So if you're joining us for the first time, I suggest that you go back and listen to the first and second classes. This is a very controversial subject in, for many people, not all people, some people. And uh, I wanna make a few statements before I continue with this subject or any subject as far as that's concerned. Nothing that I am doing is in any way trying to change your mind about anything. It's up to you to change your mind uh, about um, what you believe and how you perceive uh, based upon new information that is coming in. So there's no agenda here to convert somebody to a certain belief system. Uh, in fact, some of the things that I'm going to be, um, I'm sorry, we, we went over time with exercise, so I did not get ready. Michael, last week I put away A Course of Miracles in a Bible somewhere, and it may be down in the cabinets here. Um, so some of the things that I'm going to be sharing uh, with you doesn't even necessarily uh, have my endorsement as a belief. <laughs> We're just looking at a lot of different ways of looking at this subject to see what resonates with you, how that you might want to, uh, uh, to qualify some of this information into your belief system. And uh, we've been through that so much here at Heartlight, the power of our belief system uh, driving uh, our cellular replication. So your body is going to end up reflecting what you truly believe. Doesn't matter if what you believe is actually fact, but it may be truth to you. I want you to understand there's a difference sometimes in fact and truth. Some things are a fact, but they're not your truth. So as you make things your truth by believing it, which means that you have given your power to a thought or an idea, then it becomes true to you. That's why a lot of people are in a state of debating and uh, uh, d uh, trying to convince each other, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, and all of that is because in some way, people believe what they believe is truth. But the other people who don't believe like that also believe they, there's this truth. And I say it does become their truth. So truth isn't always based on fact. Truth is based on what you choose to believe, right? So this always reminds us that we're the center of our power not belief systems. So before you qualify any of this information, make sure that you know where you are directing your power uh, before you do that. So to me to do that is not to listen to just one way <coughs> of seeing something, but look at multiple ways of seeing it and see which one of those resonates with you. Now we have a word for that from where I'm from, we call it a witness. What witnesses? If something is said, whether it's v vocal or written, if it is already in you as a part of your innate intelligence system, then when you hear it out here, it's a frequency match for what's already in here. Now you may not know all that is in there because we live in such a small band of awareness called human <coughs> consciousness, which is really awareness, that 99% of what we really know is submerged into the subconscious of ourselves. Do you realize how many things you can do without thinking? because you've got, you've got a recording in your subconscious somewhere, like driving the car. You can drive the car, talk on the phone, which you shouldn't, or talk to the passenger, or think about what you're doing. 
and, and drive along because you've, you've learned to do that without almost being conscious of doing it. It's, it's a recording of the subconscious mind. These are things that are, are driving us, all the things that you've learned that, to do without thinking about it. So that's what I wanted to say. That's a statement I wanted to make is uh, we're all looking at these different directions that we can look at this, this subject. I'd like to begin today with something that I ran on to that I just thought I wanted to share with you. What is starseed? <clears throat> Starseeds are souls who are advanced beings that originate from far distant stars and galaxies or parallel uh, Earth or dominions whose mission is to ascend Earth with the ascension. Star seeds experience a total amnesia as their true identities. However, each is coded with an activation switch. Each awakening is unique and can range in many different degrees. Why I read this is because star seeds that have come to this planet and have gone into what's called this amnesia state of forgetting cannot remember that in one lifetime. It would be totally impossible. So there is a system, it's a system, not the system, it is a system in which one can continue to return back to the earth until they have learned and raised their consciousness enough to match the memory they have forgotten. <coughs> Are you with me? Yeah. And this is why I keep talking about epiphanies, downloads. This, this, is the, this is the name of the game right now, is all of you should be having more experiences with downloads, with aha moments, and with these epiphanies of thoughts you would have never thought. People say, how do I know I get uh, a download of a thought which is a memory I have forgotten? When that memory is made a thought and it pierces into your human awareness, that's an experience. That's an experience. But for it to do that, it has to have a, what I call womb. And why I'm using womb is because that's the Hebrew translation of the word matrix in the Bible. I didn't even know the word matrix was in the Bible, but it's in there about five times. And if you look it up, it means womb. So the womb represents the portal or pathway that is opened for higher data and information to come from higher dimensions into the dimensions and meet us where we are. Now that's what these classes are about. That's what meditation is about. All the things that you are doing is preparing yourself for this experiences of this penetration of universal mind into the human mind. Because every time it does, it changes and raises the frequency of the human mind and raises it out of the density of and further away from the principles of ego and unites you with, united, with, uh, with universal principle and law. And when law becomes your Lord, and that's what we teach here, that the word Lord means is law. I do, anyway. Because that's a word some of us have shied away from, because Lord means something lording over us. No. Substitute it with spiritual law. When it says, he is the Lord of the Lord, it's saying that there is a spiritual law over human law divine law. And that comes from Romans 8 that tells us that we are free from the law of sin and death by the law of the spirit of life in Christ. So you don't want to be lawless. 
even though you've left the law of the Old Testament and the do's and the don'ts and the moral codes and all of that, you want to be operating with a spiritual divine law. And that's why contributors to that would be Holmes with Science of Mind teaching, Fillmore's with some of that teaching, and there was a lot who came along about 100, 150 years ago who tapped into this idea of how the mind and thoughts become things and the power of thinking. So, starseed, I just like that. So starseed, and you that say sometimes in joking, I don't think I'm from here. I just don't feel like I'm from this planet. I just don't fit in. You say it kind of as a joke, but maybe something is really awakening in you that tells you that you have come from the stars. And you can look this up, but it proves that 80% of what makes up a atom is the same stuff that makes up stars that we are star stuff. I've done my work to remember that I'm connected to Pallades. This is why I love anything that is written or channeled from the Palladian channels. And it's probably the most out there that is available. So that tells me there is a lot of souls that have landed on planet Earth from that star constellation. There's some from Orion, there's others, and these are all mentioned in the Bible. Pleiades is mentioned, Orion is mentioned. This is not some new age book, this is the good old King James Bible. Talks about these star places. So for you to even hear this, you must have incarnated enough that it can be said to you or it wouldn't be being said. That means you must have a level of consciousness in you to receive and resonate with this information. Because I don't care if you're sitting there thinking, I don't know about what he's saying. I don't know that I'm a star. I don't care what your head's saying. It may not be your truth. So I'm saying all this for some reason today because it is time for you to have a true remembrance of your true story, not the story that they've given you after you got here, but the one you brought in. One more thing that I kind of just went on that I want to share with you today. Life is an echo. What you send out comes back. What you reap, you sow. What you give, you get. What you see in others exists in you. Do not judge so will you not be judged. Radiate and give love, and love will come back to you. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So, just wanted to throw those in. Okay, just as a backup, we'll just start with a little bit of the history we talked about for anybody that's new with us. That uh, we know that reincarnation was uh, being taught in the first and second centuries. It was accepted. Uh, quite well until we have um, uh, origin of, of Alexandria, who was a great Roman fountainhead of Christianity and believed in reincarnation as a part of Christianity. Ha! <laughs> That's what I want to say to Christians. <laughs> reincarnation was a part of Christianity before it was taken out like so many other things. So it's not something that's been thought up by a bunch of crazy, hippie, new, new age uh, people uh, or the West or the Eastern religions, but it was a part of Christianity in its pre-Nicene state. And of course, Constantine wanted to be, uh, had a certain agenda uh, that he did not want people to believe they had any kind of a second chance. Because you've got to understand, if people believe there's only one time, they're, they're more easily controlled by fear. Right? 
So we, we talked a little bit about that. Um, past life, ther uh, in li uh, past life th uh, therapy, only 1% experience a remarkably pleasant past life, which becomes the foundation for happiness and reality. That's why I'm very reluctant to people who do past life regressions, and you're always some wonderful king or queen of England or your, uh, Egypt or something like that, because really past lives is to bring up the part of your past that needs to be healed. But everybody wants to hear how great they were, how beautiful they were, how rich they were. They were a king, they were a queen. No, past lives truly is an opportunity to bring up from the past uh, a part of our karmic story that has not been healed but has been forgotten and suppressed that is coming up for healing. Now we learn in energy work that every time you're healed of some emotional trauma, that that pattern is changed, but the energy is freed. Get that? Because it takes energy to hold a pattern. So if you have an emotion of, of grief or hurt or anger, uh, 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 anxiety, fear, depression, anxiety, that's only a pattern. So it takes energy to hold that together. And once you free the pattern, the energy is free and enters into your energy account. Okay, example. You'll have a certain budget because you have certain obligations to meet, right? You, maybe you have a car payment, maybe, or you have a house payment, and you've got certain things every month that you, you, you pay, right? And you need a certain amount of money to do that. And sometimes people just barely make it because they just have enough money to meet those needs. Many people, millions and millions of people are living paycheck to paycheck today. 38%. 38%, wow, we got the number here. So let's say that that person who is needing everything that they make to survive and to, and to make it, uh, all of a sudden they pay their car off. You know, there is an end. Or maybe they've had their house a long time and the house has paid off and now that payment every month that they made is gone and they have freed up money they didn't have. Are you with me? Yeah. So that's why energy work is so important of people who can help us to release those patterns or mispatternings of old trauma and emotions that is stuck in our story, and it could go back many lifetimes or whatever, but as we begin to release them, we free up new energy so that we can have an upgrade of life. And you can move out of survival mode into a mode of creativity and manifestation. So I hope that's a good example to show you well, I'm going to say it again. The past life therapy, 1% experience a remarkably pleasant past. 1%. But 99% of past therapy from qualified counselors tell us of past pain that is showing up in current experiences. So when you start asking, why did this happen? I didn't deserve that. I'm a good person. I meditate. I go to heart light. Uh, I, I'm trying to be a, uh, you know, I help. I, I, I support a, a group. I do all the good works. And that's where we get deceived a little bit because we think sometimes good works is, uh, is our spiritual gauge, and that isn't. It's good to do good works. It's good to be a good human. But being good sometimes is not as so spiritual as we think, it's just good. And we should be good. But sometimes we confuse that. Um, the Catholic Church, for instance, does a lot of good things. I mean, we, the hospitals and, and, and so many things the Catholic Church has invested and done that is for the good of mankind. And yet at the same time, their dogma and their doctrine is very fear-based and has done a lot of harm with a lot of people and has disempowered women and, and gay people and, and all, a lot of people that have been marginalized due to Catholicism and other religions that follow that same fear-based teaching. 
That's why Jesus said, do not call me good. For there's none good but my Father which is in heaven. Because he did not want them to say, I'm following Jesus because he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Look what he does. He does this, he does that. And, and, and then they would have missed, missed his teachings because they didn't care what he taught because he's a good guy. And we're going to do the same thing politically here. We go for the good guy, the one we think's the good guy. <laughs> and that's relative because the, the one that does the good guy is the guy who uh, agrees with us what should be done. That's the good guy. And the bad guy is the one who doesn't do what we want to see done. So it's all relative when it comes to what's good and what's not good. You know, you're back into that 3D thing of two opposites sharing the same reality. And the Course says that cannot happen. One is real, one is not real. Either love is real or fear is real. But they cannot exist as two opposites together. So the counselor, uh, Justinian, understood the political danger inherent in Origen's teachings. The rest was simply an emperor doing what an emperor does best, and that's control and power and greed over the people. The council, as instructed by the emperor, produced uh, 14 new anathemas, I'm saying that right. Uh, and the very first one, um, I looked up anathema, so I thought I wrote it down, but it's um, kind of laws or ordinances of some kind. And the very first one uh, condemned reincarnation and the concept that souls pre-exist with God. Two things was taken out there, very important. Reincarnation was taken out and the fact that we existed before we were conceived in the womb of our, our, our mother. The pre-existence of spirit as a spiritual being. Now those are two very important things because one of them is actually who you are and the other is the process of why you came here. So they wiped that out completely. If anyone asserts the fabulous pre-existence of souls and shall assert the monstrous restoration which it follows, it is a part of the anthemia. <laughs> the Pope never signed the order. This is kind of interesting. The Pope never signed the order, so technically it was never legal. Now this is a good lesson to show you that even though some people make things illegal, unless it's reinforced and the people believe in it, it doesn't happen. So it was an ability to change people to believe a certain way that made it happen, not the legality of it at all. So the Pope never signed, so technically it was never legal, but the Pope's signature was not needed. Hmm. We know that the soul is indestructible, and I'm going to question that because I don't teach so much that the soul is totally indestructible. I think there is a real confusion in making the soul and spirit the same thing, and they are not. And of course, this comes from my Bible teachings because the Bible says, the soul that sinneth it shall die. And beware of he that can kill the body and the soul. That's Old and New Testament both. So that tells me something is going on different here with the soul. So the soul, as I've taught you, comes from what? Can anybody tell me? What's, what's the Greek word for soul? Anybody? I just, Suke. 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 Now, what words do we get from the Greek word suke? Psychiatry, Psychiatry sociology, psychics. <laughs> All of that talks about the mind. So it's mostly translated mind in the New Testament along with the word life. So there is a confusion that started in the translation of trying to intermingle the soul 
with the spirit. But the spirit is a completely different component of energy. Same energy, but different component. Just as ice and water are different. Uh, spirit, you know, I, I just keep going over this stuff, but I guess I got, I, I'm supposed to do it. Spirit is pneuma. I think that's P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma. And Greek has masculine, feminine, and neutral word endings, unlike English. Pneuma has a masculine. So you can always put spirit in the role. <laughs> uh, Shakespeare said the world's a stage, but, but you have a stage in you in which you take things that are invisible, es esoterical, and you have to put it into some form to understand it. And that's where archetypes come in. The archetype of the hero, the archetype of this, the archetype of that. That doesn't mean it's specifically that, but it means it gives you a form of something invisible and what it would be to you in a visible understanding of it. So the stage would be you always want to bring the spirit into a more masculine uh, 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 archetype. It's masculine. Suke ends in a feminine, so you always want to see the true mind, not the brain, the true mind as a feminine. So that gives you this, the spirit and the soul working together. Unfortunately, the soul has been hijacked by the brain. And now we don't come from a mind, we come from a brain and call it the mind. 99.9% percent of people, if I said point to your mind, will go because they think this is the mind. The mind is a part, a component of the spirit. Remember, <laughs> remember created, created he them male and female. You got to get that. Created he them, male and female. Everybody is male and female. But on the stage of perception, she got pulled out and man lost his womb and was no longer the womb man. So the brain lost its womb and ability to receive directly from the spirit, so it came up with its own concepts, ideas, and whatever, which produced religion, as far as I'm concerned, and other systems. She was taken out in, in, in the story, in the dream, in the illusion. She's taken out and separated. So imagine what's the spirit in the, of, of, the, of, the, of the brain was taken out and held captive in the heart. So she's no longer recognized here. She's only recognized separate in the heart. So now you've got the brain and the heart, and he takes over all the brain over her, the heart. And the Bible tries to give you that story. Man is the head of the woman. You can say the brain is the head of the heart. If the heart wants to know something, she can't speak because she holds pure wisdom. She has to go ask him, and he says, no, that wisdom needs to be turned into the knowledge that I have. So wisdom was lost. That's why there's such thing as ancient wisdom. There had to be a whole school built on ancient wisdom because wisdom has been completely lost to the theology and the knowledge that has been presented to the people by the brain. I know it's heavy, heavy, heavy. Get over it. It's, it's college time. <laughs> Graduate. <laughs> so in the mind of Suke, was born the first thought that was not in the thought of the mind. Because if the thought of the mind would have been forth, it would have brought 
yin and yang, male and female, into a oneness and union with each other. But instead, the agenda was always this. And it starts with one part of this brain saying to another part of itself, who are you? In other words, I'm separate from you. You're not me and I'm not you. And a belief in separation was conceived in human consciousness. And from that one seed, from that one thought, systems were built on I'm not you and you're not me. Religions, education, Racism, every ism that there is, is based on that one thought of a belief in separation. Now, if there's original sin, that is what sin is. It is a belief in separation. That's your sin. A belief in separation. And at that moment, you missed the mark. <laughs> you missed the mark completely. So, when the... Suke divided itself by saying, I'm not you and you're not me. She, part of her did not go into that belief, in belief, but stayed with him in the spirit. So a part of your soul is with the spirit. Part of your soul believed in separation and therefore produced a system to prove something, even though it wasn't true, I'm going to produce a system to prove that this is the truth. And it began to develop these different perceptions of built on separation. So you have part of her that is still with the spirit, so you have a spiritual aspect of the soul, and you have a part of the soul that is with the body. Now this is, uh, again, in the Bible when it says, when God breathed the breath of life into man, and man became a living soul. He's talking about a body. He's talking about a body made of the dust of the earth, or minute particles, actually, it means. She goes with the, the body. Now, the body has to develop a system to prove that it's true, so it develops all of these uh, confusing ideas that end up as religions and uh, systems of thought that proves that the lie is the truth. You know, there's so much right now about lying. I don't watch much, but I just happened to get caught yesterday. Went down the rabbit hole for an hour or so of what's going on yesterday, and it was, who's lying? Who's lying? This one's lying. That's been lying. We found out they're a liar. This is a liar. That's a liar. It's about lying, 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 lying. But the real issue is how many people truly believe in their lie? I don't think as many that say they do believe in their lies. But I think they're using them to prove an agenda. Are you with me? If they have an agenda against abortion or against gay rights or, or they think the racial thing's out of control or whatever, they're going to come up with some kind of political idea or perception that's going to support that and they're going to put it out there as the truth even though deep down they know it isn't but it is true to their agenda. Because no lie is a good lie until you put a little truth with it. Because people will resonate to the piece of truth in the lie more than the lie itself. Hmm. So anyway, about the soul. So, and why I'm doing all of that is to tell you that the only thing that really needs to reincarnate is the soul, part of the soul. Spirit doesn't need to reincarnate. There's, what was the reason for spirit to incarnate? Other than to support her. I like the romantic uh, of this. Make it 
romantic, that spirit so loves her that he's waiting for her to be made whole again. And this kind of answers on a deep, deep level the psychological thing that is going on about the feminine and women. Uh, there seems to be a very deep subconscious innate fear about the feminine power. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. amen. And there certainly is today. The more that women are emerging and taking their power back, the more concerned they're getting and trying to, what do we do about this? A woman president, let's keep it as far as we can yeah. from not happening. That's right. And if somebody gets a little high, let's discredit them, which they've done to this vice president as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Whether you're for or against it doesn't matter to me. But I certainly think that they have... Uh, disempowered her a lot from the one that I knew that was running for president. I thought she was brilliant and said a lot of powerful things, whether I agreed or disagreed, but now I don't hear a thing from her. I don't even hardly see her anymore because they won't let her be who she truly is, and she knows that, that she has lost her power in that office because they will see that she does. It's too close to the presidency to get in to be a vice president. And also, you have the racial mix there, too. That's another thing we just ain't going to have again. Or well, Mary Ann Williamson, too. Yes. They won't, they won't let her, give her a chance. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So, again, these are my thoughts. I'm not trying to get you to believe them. I'm just telling you that the reason for reincarnation is until the soul works out itself and comes back to who it truly is as a spiritual being and raises its frequency and vibration to match that part of herself that did not fall into the density of the belief of separation and is rejoined, then they, he and her in their fullness, can come together and create a whole new inner world. That can be their baby when they conceive an inner, inner world, the world of light and truth and oneness and love and whatever. That is where this kingdom is going to be born that they keep talking about. They call it heaven, golden age, millennium, many names for it, but it has to be born first in the union of the soul and the spirit coming together because he needs her. Some man comes along and says, I can't wait to be a father. I can't wait to get old enough. I want to be a father so bad. I, I love children. Good. You better find you a woman. Because <laughs> that desire is not going to happen until you get somebody that can make this thing happen for you. And it's the woman and the feminine that can make this thing happen. Ooh. Okay. I wanted to, because I'm going to make a statement here, and this is my statement, this is me. I believe in reincarnation. I do not believe in reincarnation. And I'm not talking this way, I'm talking this way. This is why people are going to perceive sometimes these we who have tapped into the multi-levels of consciousness and have moved into that cross place on the cross in which we're moving out of the linear into the parallel, the way we're going to speak now is in multi-dimensional to multi-dimensional consciousness. And what's going to be a challenge is there's really no absolutes on those levels. That's why it's important that you build everything that goes on now. You've got to build it on the one thing that is the constant. You've got to get it. That's why it keeps coming around. And that is the I am. 
That's the only thing that's constant is I am. You can have all the changes you want in your life, but you still are. You move to another state. My God, back years ago, I would live somewhere and not like it and have a rough time and whatever, and I'd think, okay, I'm packing my U-Haul truck and I'm moving to Chicago. And guess what? I was, there I was. <laughs> you can't get away from the I am. It is the point of, of the constant within our consciousness. So you have to not keep identifying yourself by what's changing, but keep identifying yourself by who you are. I'm trying to do that right now with the challenges of getting older. It's a challenge to get older. Let's be honest. I'm going to be honest. It's, it's not fun sometimes to have a change in a lot of things uh, in your life, mentally and physically. But I have to keep telling myself, I don't care how old I get or what happens with this body, I'm the same I am that I was when I was 20 years old or 30 or 40 years old, was, was healthier and thinner and whatever in the past. It's the same I am that is in this experience. It's the eye of the storm. It is the place in which you find the stillness of I am that you can always have a, so reincarnation, what we're going to look at, reincarnation, as I said, to me, is not for spirit, for spirit, spirit is what you call God, or spirit called creator, whatever you choose to call your source, right, is spirit, God is a spirit. And I keep stressing these things about God is love, God is spirit, not God has love and God has spirit, but is spirit. So you really don't have to use the word God if you were using the word love right. You'd be using the name of God. The name or nature of God is love. It's not necessary to say God. It is kind of in the conversation of 3D, but actually you don't have to do it if you understand what God is and say what he is or he is or she is or it is without in any way tapping on this word God because the word God has a lot of baggage to it. But we do. We come, I come in and out of it, but I'm aware when I do that I'm doing it for the purpose of communication. There's a place in the course here that says the body is a good tool for commu communication until real communication is. Mm, I really like that. What would be real communication? Telepathy? I know what you're saying. Not what you're saying, but I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So it is... It is the feminine that's been evolving for a long, long time. But because she's a part of the spirit, the spirit goes with her on the journey of this thing we call reincarnation. And the thing about spirit that you understand the, is very different than the nature or what we've been presented as the nature of the man or the male, which is aggressive, controlling, very much over the, the female in many cases. I'm not about individual situations. If you got a good one, good for you. But I, I've been in this long enough to know what women have been through. I've talked to too many women. Too many women have talked to me. I've seen the abuse. I've seen the control. I've seen how women have lost their identity and their purpose and whatever way too much because of the, the, this power of the archetype of the controlling uh, male figure. So...
He is waiting for her to enter the level of the marriage. The first miracle that Jesus performs is at the marriage. Now, I believe that it was his marriage. If you study it, and how his mother was the one who said, there's no wine here. And let's all, she was taking care of the marriage of her son to most likely Mary Magdalene. But I'm not going to argue that because it's not worth arguing. Let's bring it into a metaphysic, put it on the stage of my mind, and I see him and her, soul and spirit, interacting. That's why I don't debate these things about the literalism of the Bible. It's not that important to me to prove it or not prove it. It, it just helps me get the story right in me on the stage of my, my consciousness. So I see that, that point that says there will be a time in which she will have evolved through the many incarnations to reach back into the place that will match the part of herself and she will become whole. And then they will become whole together in the marriage of the heart and the human brain. And out of that, I believe, was born heart math, the teachings of heart math, and the teachings of so much heart teaching that is out there. Greg Braden started in 1994. Uh, others begin to teach uh, the fact that science has found 40% of all neurons in the brain is in the heart and to realize that all intelligence is not in the human head, but it is in the heart of mankind, her. She holds a part of this intelligence that he doesn't have. And that's why he's not produced much other than violence and greed and hurt because there's always a part missing in the world of ego. Maybe that's why people uh, connected into this whole teaching of uh, Tolly on the new earth that became so worldwide and popular because something in them was saying, in you is a new earth that's ready to awaken in you and be brought forth. I'm going to say this also. I do not believe that everyone reincarnates. What I was trying to tell you a while ago is you get into the nature of true spirit, not, the, not the, the male as we know it in its aggressive, controlling state of, of this patriarchal. And this all comes in the image of, of Yahweh and God out there, the old man in the sky. I mean, my goodness, if God's a man, then men are empowered. And the Bible literally teaches that God only made men and didn't make women at all. It says that in black and white, that God only created men. Then this afterthought was this woman to be his helpmeet, to pleasure him. <laughs> what a terrible story. That's why it doesn't make any sense if you don't bring it into the metaphysical deeper meanings behind the symbolism of it. If you don't, you're going to throw the book out if you grow spiritually at all, which a lot of you did who did have Bible. Most of you never had the Bible, so you never had anything to throw away. But a lot of people do who come into this level of metaphysical teaching because they don't believe that, so I'm done with it. Instead of keeping it and say, but what is deeply coded in here? And I hope you're glad I did. I couldn't tell you these things if I'd have thrown it all out. I've been up here mumbling around trying to find something to tell you that is uh, not at all the activation of the codes of what is going to help to act activate the Creator's plan to move us into the new age. There's a plan, people, and it's innately in you, but it has to be awakened. My time goes so quickly. So, what I'm saying to you is the, the nature of spirit, and I, again, I quote this, and I, I don't know if it's Mary Ann Williams, and of course, the miracles that I heard it, but I just love it. The spirit's nature is, I thought you just might want to know. 
Do you hear the gentleness of that? I'm not going to make you know. I'm not going to be aggressive. I'm not going to try to manipulate or control you. But if you do come to a place that you want to know, I'll let you know. Now, that's not the nature of religion. It's forceful. It's controlling. It's binding. It's harsh. And that tells me they're not coming from the right place of spirit at all. Spirit is gentle. It waits patiently, just as it waits for her. Doesn't care how many lifetimes it takes, one or a thousand. I will wait until she arrives as a match again. So by saying that, what I'm saying to you is I do think there are options on the other side when you get into, and when you say the other side, oh my goodness, I wish it was just like here and there, <laughs> but it's not. There's as many dimensions over there as there is over here. I believe that everyone leaves the body at the level of consciousness they attained while in the body. And my scripture for that is, as the tree falls, so shall it lay. So wherever people are here, they go to that level of consciousness where a lot of people are, so that's their classroom over there now. So when people go, there, there is a, I'm just throwing this out, Tell you what I, I saw. They, um, they have an option. They have a choice. When I told you about my in-between life and all that that changed me, it was just so fantastic, and I was preparing for this lifetime in here, and I stood before these beings and these entities. The one thing that I noticed the more I didn't feel anything making me do anything. I didn't feel a God over me. I felt I was everything. I was the beings. I was everything. Everything was me. I didn't feel that some God saying, you need to do this, or I'm going to have you go do this. This is your purpose. I felt like that I was writing my own spiritual contract in this incarnation, making my own choices because they gave me choices. I was given choices. I wasn't told this is what you have to do. You don't go down, have to go down there and start preaching at 17 years old, but here's the deal. Since this is your last time, I'm gonna show you what you're gonna to have to go through to reach four more lifetimes in this one to get to the level of consciousness that you should have gotten to, but free will has held you back. Whoa. Oh, I know. Bless your heart. I pray for you all that have been sent to me. We pray for you too, Jimmy. Thank you. I can use it. It's not easy to get this stuff out like this. I wish I could repeat what I just said. Watch your video. No, no. No. What did I say? That was really interesting. Okay. So anyway, spirits, natures, I thought you just might want to know. You have options. Oh, I was talking about my experience and how that I felt a part of everything that I did. Nobody made me do anything or, or made me come down here and start all this. But they calculated that I would take in linear four more lifetimes to attain where I needed to attain in this lifetime. Therefore, I had to start early. I had to do all this preaching. I had to do all this stuff. I couldn't finish school. I couldn't go to college. I couldn't go to the prom. Sorry, that's out. Don't have time for it. Let's get going. You gotta do what four time lifetimes would do. You'll get there in four lifetimes, but since you don't have any more, you're gonna do it all here. And I can't tell you what a healing I received from that because I was pissed at that point. I was pissed at God because I thought God called me. God chose me. God called me into the ministry, and I'm going, why? Let me finish school. I have friends. 
I wanted to do what other teenagers were doing. I didn't want to end up down in Montgomery, Alabama at 19 in the middle of all that race stuff and all that. I didn't want to go there and do that, but I did because it was written on the tables of my heart as a contract to go and do what I did. And that's why I told you that was here Sunday that that story came out of me about that man coming in and, and using the N-word and all that kind of stuff and shocked me awake. Talk about woke. I was woke that my Pentecostal brethren weren't as loving as I thought they might be. And I said, uh-uh, I'm not joining this. Yeah. It said it turned directly for me, so I did not get trapped in the religious denominations that I was raised in when I, see, and I'm not blaming him because as God hardened the heart of Pharaoh to move the children of Israel, God hardened his heart in front of me to say that, to wake me up and say, don't get stuck here, move on. Yeah. This is not your contract. This is not your destiny. I will not let you stay as a Pentecostal preacher within these uh, confinements. This is not what you incarnated for, and therefore I will use whoever and whatever in your life to keep you going until you fulfilled all of these contracts so that you don't have to come back here anymore in 3D. Thank you. <laughs> so our time's about done, but I, I'm, going to, I'm going to read to you. Uh, but I'm, I'm telling you, on a spirit level, I do not believe in reincarnation. On a soul level, I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe that some people choose to come back here because they can learn faster if they use time and space and use the body correctly to experience will move them faster. But if they choose to stay over there, they will move much slower, slower out of time and space uh, than those that are here. This is why people will take about any kind of a body they can get sometimes to get back in and that's why I read souls are lined up to get into the earth because it is school. It is God's school 101 that you can move through the school much quicker if you do your homework. Huh? You know how school is? Some people did their homework, made good grades, did what they were supposed to do, graduated with honors, and then there was those that were lazy, didn't want to be there, didn't do their work, and did not get the benefits of, the, of school. So please, do your work. Do your homework. Do your research. Because your research prepares you for the next test that you're going to go through. And he, and I, I, thus saith the Spirit. The Spirit just, just said that. Watch your priorities. Make sure you have time to read and to study and to, and to do some meditation and contemplation. Don't let this 3D world just absolutely in, distract you so much. Turn the darn phone off. Go put it in the other room once in a while. It's not an attachment. I know I miss some things because I don't carry my phone around all the time. But I figure if it's important, they'll leave a message and I'll get back to them when I can. But, but uh, of course, I live with a whole different other story. Careful, he's probably watching. Oh, sorry, Tim. Anyway, he knows, he knows how I feel about it. But I, I, I give grace, <laughs> and mostly because of the business aspect of it, that we're always, that's one thing that So Energetics has such wonderful reviews about, is people get us. They don't get a machine, they get a real person, and they get a real person that has great patience. <laughs> I listen to Tim speak to people sometimes, and it, it's amazing. Because he gets some really interesting calls. People don't know what they're doing. He's teaching them how to use their computer. He's teaching them stuff all the time. So patiently. So I can't say anything about that. That's, that's what it is. Well, our time is uh, up for today. Um, I have no apologies. I'm just getting to where Spirit is leading me to get to. And... 
May, a lot, a lot was given to you today. I understand. But everything that is for you today was received in your spirit. And uh, I'll keep repeating things. I think it's important to keep repeating this. I really do. I don't think that we should go on out too further, but I think we always need to come back and lay another layer to the portrait that's being painted in this new story that is being written and co-authored by Divine Truth. Thank you for your support for this. Uh, again, I thank the support for those who are online that send to the class to keep this class free and we want to keep it free. Oh, let's just, can we just take a second or so to take this information and knowledge today that has come forward. We've raised it to the altar of our higher self, to the altar to be altered as we alter ourselves and shift our perception. From this human story that many have bought into that is not our true story of creation and purpose. Again, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you and each and every one of us as the teacher. You know I constantly, what I go through to do this because I know that I will not do it as clear as how you could speak it directly from spirit to spirit. I have to try to translate it into a language that the brain many times resists because every truth that is resolved, uh, uh, every information that has been lost, every memory that has been lost, every thought that has that has been restored will diminish the ego more and more and more that it can no longer set up on the throne of our minds revealing itself to be God of this world. I want to take this moment of, to feel gratitude for those who are here. Those here at Heartlight that are patient those who stay when things are said that is not hard, that is hard to understand in the beginning. I'm thankful for those who are steadfast in the faith and the vision of our next stage of evolution, of consciousness and body. Spirit, I know you know exactly what you're doing for who you have brought and who you will bring. Take a deep breath. If you need healing today of any worry, anxiety, fear, concern. In this atmosphere we're in right now, it can be dissolved as you shift your mind from fear of the world, fear of life, to the love that you are. To the I am that you are, for it will not ever disappoint you. The I am will never come short of your expectations and desires. The I am is the constant of your consciousness. It is your power. Be careful what you attach to it when you say, I am afraid, I am angry, I am sick, I am poor. Just be the I am that we are. Feel the power of being. Oh. 
All right, we are ready to return to consciousness. Thank you so much. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what's going on here. I, 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 the ego, is out of control. <laughs> the me, the me of I is out of control. I, I just don't know what's going on. It's just, it's just happening. It's coming through so fast. And don't think I'm not paying the price for it mentally and physically. I'm not complaining. I'm explaining. <laughs> but it's, it's a struggle. Sleep patterns, eating patterns, physical issues are going on because I'm trying to hold this in this third dimensional body, all this higher stuff, and it's like putting uh, it's like putting 220 in a 110 socket. <laughs> and sometimes I just feel it's going to explode and blow up. So thank you for your love and grounding and grounding. You ground me. You ground me. And I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great week. Hope to see you Friday.